So next up we have um, Josh Cannon, um, and he also is working with Brian Iverson and Ridge Mulford um, out of Brigham Young Uni University and University of Dayton, um, a topic on passively deployed unfolding radiator panels for small sat thermal management. As mentioned, my name is uh, Josh Cannon, and uh, I'm a PhD student at Brigham Young University. Um, and I'm really excited to get to share um, some of the research we've been doing on passively deployed unfolding radiator panels for small satellite thermal management. Um, as mentioned, my co-authors include uh, Dr. Brian Iverson, also from BYU, and Dr. Rich Mulford from University of Dayton. Um, and also this work was supported by a NASA Space Technology Graduate Research Opportunity Fellowship. So hop right in. Um, as the miniaturization of control electronics and instruments improves, small satellites such as CubeSats are being used for an increasing variety of payloads and in more diverse mission locations such as lunar orbit. CubeSat developers um, need to employ novel solutions for thermal control of their spacecraft uh, with this increasing system complexity and function. Small satellite thermal control can be challenging due to the large fluctuations in external heat load and uh, internal heat load as well. And also the small form factor, um, specifically small satellites such as CubeSats face the added challenge of suffering from high power dissipation per unit surface area, um, more stringent size and weight restrictions and reduced thermal mass when compared to larger spacecraft. Um, but despite these challenges, CubeSats uh, need to maintain their internal electronics uh, and, and instruments within strict temperature ranges. Uh, in our work, we categorize approaches to CubeSat thermal control based on two factors, whether the thermal control system is powered and whether the radiator is responsive. Uh, we define a responsive or dynamic radiator as one whose surface geometry or properties can be modified to modulate the radiative heat loss um, according to the needs of the spacecraft. While a static radiator doesn't have that ability, um, thus thermal control systems can be either active or passive and static or dynamic. Uh, many small satellites use active dynamic thermal control systems. However, passive systems offer the potential of dynamic thermal control without the added system complexity and control system dependence. Additionally, passive systems may offer size, weight, and power savings compared to active systems. The thermal control system we propose here is a uh, dynamic passive system using a deployable radiator. In addition to offering a potentially high turndown ratio, deployable radiators can also reject the greatest amount of heat among common state-of-the-art radiator designs. A high turndown ratio makes a deployable radiator more suitable for missions that have widely fluctuating thermal environments. Similar passive dynamic thermal control systems include the CubeSat thermal louvers uh, that are passively actuated by bimetallic coils. Uh, these were developed by Allison Evans. Um, they open to reveal a more emissive interior surface, which effectively changes the surface properties of the radiator. Um, this system was successfully demonstrated on board the Dellinger CubeSat in 2018, and it's a great example of a passive dynamic CubeSat thermal control system. The louver design offers the benefit of allowing the satellite to reach steady state temperatures in partially open configurations um, as the thermal conditions uh, might demand. And it also occupies a, a very small form factor. Um, I really like this design. Um, but we thought that it could be modified to allow for an increase in radiative uh, surface area during times of greater heat rejection while still maintaining this conceal and reveal radiator function. A passive dynamic thermal control system that does increase the radiative surface area is the passively deployed radiator uh, that's actuated by a shape memory uh, alloy element developed by JAXA. As the temperature of the satellite increases, a strip of SMA that you can see here at the top um, is designed to unfold, deploying the panel and revealing a highly emissive interior surface, uh, which you can see here. 
Um, one important feature of the design is that it's a good, it has a good conductive path from the CubeSat body to the radiator panel through the use of a pyrolytic graphite sheet. In our design, we wanted to combine the benefits of the passively deployed radiator, such as this one, with the lack of hysteresis and ability to reach um, steady state and partially open configurations that comes with the bimetallic coils, uh, such as those used in the, the louvers previously described um, when compared to the SMA actuator. So in this work, we propose a dynamic passively deployed radiator fin array uh, consisting of triangular panels. The triangular panels are actuated with bimetallic coils that deploy in response to an increase in the CubeSat temperature and reveal a highly emissive um, interior surface of the satellite and radiator fins. Uh, here I have some images of the CubeSat size prototype in the uh, stowed and partially deployed configurations. Um, but note that uh, these images don't show the emissive coating uh, that was applied to those interior surfaces prior to experimental testing, but you'll see some images of that later. Uh, the radiator ray is completely external to the satellite and occupies a 1U-sized face of the CubeSat. Here you can see a simulated cross-section of the system, uh, including the placement of these capped-on resistance heaters um, that provide the heat input during our vacuum chamber testing. Uh, but yeah, note that the interior of the, the prototype is otherwise empty. So on the left um, here, you can see uh, a time lapse of the passive deployment of the radiator fins in response to an increase in the temperature of the spacecraft. That increase in temperature comes from those capped on heaters. Um, on the right, uh, I've plotted in red uh, the heat input. Um, so you can see it's just a square wave that we're applying here of about 35 watts. And then at about uh, 30 something minutes, we, we turn it off. Um, and then in blue, you can see the uh, deployment angle of the panels here uh, in degrees. Um, and so you can see as the satellite, the, the heat supply, the satellite temperature begins to increase and then our panels deploy, the heat uh, is shut off and then the uh, panels begin to stow again, which you know you can see in the, the video as well. Um, one important thing to note from the plot is you can see there's about a, a 15 minute phase lag uh, in the system. And um, I'll talk about some ways to reduce that later in the presentation. So advantages of this system include improved reliability and decreased complexity and weight from not relying on an active uh, thermal control system. Additionally, this design can offer a potentially higher turndown ratio and maximum heat loss due to the use of optimized deployable radiator fins. Uh, this design has the advantage of being able to reach intermediate steady state positions uh, with minimal hysteresis due to those uh, bimetallic coil actuators as well. So uh, we performed uh, experimental testing at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in a liquid nitrogen cooled vacuum chamber environment. Uh, here you can see the test article uh, sitting inside the uh, cylindrical shroud and that shroud's uh, held at about 85 degrees Kelvin uh, due to that liquid nitrogen. Uh, thermocouples were placed at points of interest throughout the system. Key temperatures included the CubeSat body and panel tips which were the maximum and minimum temperatures in the system respectively. You can see those thermal couple locations um, uh, indicated here. Um, I saw some questions. I, I think one of them was about if the system's patented uh, and no, not, not yet. Um, was there another question? I, if not, I can just keep going. Um, there is one I can ask it now or at the end. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Um, it says, what is the possible performance temperature range of the shape memory alloy and how trainable is the SMA alloy for use in various thermal environments? So again, yeah, we're, we're not using a shape memory alloy. Um, I do know from the other group that was doing the shape memory alloy deployed 
um, radiator that's, uh, yeah, due to some, uh, yeah, thermal training and uh, annealing processes, you can uh, basically tune it to whichever temperature. <clears throat> and our, our bimetallic coils are the same. Uh, you don't need to do any sort of uh, thermal uh, annealing or any, any sort of training like that. We can just mechanically set um, the deployment and stowing angles just uh, by how we tension the, the coil. Um, so yeah, again, bimetallic coils for, for our system. Mm, okay. Thank you. Yep. Um, okay, so... Um, yeah, so here I'll start sharing some plots of that thermal testing we did at uh, JPL. Um, so here we're again applying a, a square wave heat input. You can see the the portions of the test where the heat uh, is being applied. That's here in gray. Um, and here in red, I've plotted the um, CubeSat body temperature in uh, Celsius. And so you can see we apply the heat, temperature increases, turn off the heat, temperature decreases. Um, that's all pretty standard. Um, so here in blue is the panel tip temperature, uh, also plotted in degrees Celsius. And then finally, we have in black, we've got the angle of the radiator panels. Um, so you can see that uh, throughout the process, they'll cycle from about negative five degrees to 160 degrees in this case. Um, so this demonstrates uh, the successful repeated actuation of the panels passively. Um, so once the bimetallic coils reach a certain temperature, they begin to curl, deploying the panels until the heat input is shut off and the system begins to cool, causing the panels to return to their stowed position again. And again, that, uh, that temperature at which the bimetallic coils begin to actuate is just entirely dependent on, um, you know, mechanically um, how much we tension it to uh, or don't um, when we're, we're installing the radiator panel. So that, that can be set in this case, you know, we had the, the panels begin to deploy at about room temperature because that's, you know, that was convenient. But um, for a, a, an actual mission, we could change that as needed. So here we have a plot of the measured temperatures across the satellite uh, during that same uh, square wave heat input test that you previously saw. I've just added some more of the measured temperatures from that portion of the test. Uh, as before, the CubeSat body temperatures are seen in red, while the radiator fin tip temperatures are seen in blue. Um, so here you can see that uh, as the panels begin to deploy, uh, they actually begin to cool before the power is switched off and the CubeSat body temperature begins to cool since they reveal their highly emissive interior surfaces to the cold surroundings. And then similarly, uh, later in the test, as the CubeSat body temperature is cooling, the panels are closing and so they actually start to increase in temperature um, as they as they are stowed. Uh, so this, um, along with the temperature difference um, between the CubeSat body and the panels isn't super desirable, uh, indicates that um, we need to do some more work on improving that conductive path between the satellite and the radiator fins, which we'll talk some more about. That's the biggest challenge facing this design at the moment. So here's a, a steady state test where we provide a, a constant heat input, again, seen in gray. Um, and then I've plotted the CubeSat body temperature. Here in blue is the panel tip temperature. You can see there's a 32 degrees Celsius um, temperature difference between the CubeSat body and panel tips in this test. And then finally in black, I've plotted the deployment angle, uh, again, in units of degrees. Um, Note that in this case, the system reaches steady state with the panels deployed to only about 70 degrees um, angular deployment. Uh, but if more heat was applied, the panels would deploy further until steady state was achieved at whatever angle that might be. To help uh, us further understand the performance of the system, a thermal model was built in SOLIDWORKS simulation and tuned using um, steady state vacuum chamber testing performed here at BYU. In this testing, steady state temperatures were recorded for two different heat inputs. 
since the emissivities and conductivities of the materials used in the prototype were known, we then uh, tune the contact resistances between key components until our temperature, our simulated temperatures match these experimentally measured results to within a degree Celsius. Um, so these measured and simulated values you can see here at the bottom, along with the temperature difference between uh, our measured and then the, the simulated temperature profiles. Um, ultimately, we found that there was uh, 225 Kelvin per watt um, resistance between the CubeSat body and each of the radiator fins. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about the implications of that uh, later. So using the thermal simulation, we were able to find the turndown ratio of the system. Turndown ratio is defined as the maximum heat loss of the radiator divided by the minimum heat loss. Um, but how those losses are calculated uh, can vary depending on what paper you're reading. Um, so in this work, we held the temperature of the top face of the satellite constant uh, so that the maximum and minimum losses were found uh, in the same thermal conditions. Uh, the maximum loss was then defined as the heat loss from the top face of the satellite and the panels and the hinges and everything uh, up here um when the panels were fully deployed and then the minimum heat loss was the heat loss from the top face and the panels and hinges and all of that stuff uh, when the panels were fully stowed so note that the radiative losses from the lower part of the satellites were excluded in both cases since it remains constant and is independent of the design of the radiator system and um you know that'll change depending on uh your design of the of your CubeSat. So in this way, we found that the heat loss, um, the maximum heat loss was 5.5 watts. The minimum was about one watt, which gives us a, a turndown ratio of, of 5.4 uh, exactly. Um, if we were to decrease the contact resistances by a factor of 10, that would bump us up to 6.3. That would be done through um, improving the that, that conduction path. Um, and then if we also uh, increase some of the radiative properties, um, for instance, if the panels had an emissivity of like 0 0.95 instead of the 0.83 that they currently have, we could get a turndown ratio of up to nine. This is kind of the theoretical maximum for this specific geometry. Um, but this value could be further improved by making design changes. Uh, such as uh, recessing the radiator fins kind of into this top face right now. Uh, even when they're stowed, we're losing some heat uh, through these sides, um, and that's limiting our, our maximum turndown ratio because it's increasing that minimum heat loss value. Um, yeah, so also using the tune simulation, we investigated the effect of panel deployment angle on satellite temperatures um, given a constant heat input. So you can see the results of that study uh, here on the right. I've plotted the simulated CubeSat body and tip temperatures um, in red and blue, uh, respectively, at various deployment angles. So you can see that the initial CubeSat body temperature is about 50 degrees Celsius. Um, but when the panels are fully open, the steady state temperature drops by about 45 degrees C. Um, in this plot, you can also see that a uh, full deployment of 180 degrees really isn't necessary. The majority of the temperature decrease comes in the first 90 degrees of deployment, and we get 95% of the total drop by the time we hit 135 degrees deployment. <clears throat> so in conclusion, uh, this design achieves passive radiator panel deployment through the use of bimetallic coils. The use of the bimetallic coils allows for continuous states to be achievable. Um, in other words, the system can come to steady state with the panels at whatever deployment angle is optimal. Additionally, the bimetallic coils have um, minimal hysteresis. The use of an array of radiator panels, each actuated independently by their own coils, provides redundancy to the system in case of actuator failure or some weird asymmetrical temperature distribution. Our current prototype has a turn ratio of five with potential for higher, um, but this will likely require um, significant improvements to the conduction path from the CubeSat body to the radiator fins and to the bimetallic coils. 
Improving that conduction path to the panels and coils is the most significant challenge facing the current design of the system. Uh, doing so will decrease the phase lag, making the panels more responsive, but also decrease the change in temperature of the CubeSat body um, required to achieve full deployment. Uh, finally, it would increase the turndown ratio as the maximum heat loss would be improved. So with regards to future work in this area, again, improving that conduction path is the top priority. Um, this could be done by adding a flexible thermal hinge, such as the pyrolytic graphite sheet used in the SMA actuated radiator um, described at the beginning of the presentation, the one uh, developed by uh, the group at, at JAXA. So uh, a thermal hinge like that could just go from the CubeSat body here up to the radiator fins. Um, another way to improve the system performance would be to add some shielding to the coils uh, so that they're not radiating directly to the cold surroundings. Uh, that would more closely tie their temperature to the temperature of the satellite, uh, which would increase their responsiveness. Um, we also plan on creating a tuned simulation and thermal desktop in order to predict the transient behavior of the system on orbit and to better model the relationship um, between the temperature of the bimetallic coils and the deployment angle of the panels. Since our previous model was steady state, um, it, it didn't capture that. Obviously, we would have to hold the panels in a, a specific position. Um, so finally, we've developed a second design for the system that uses these uh, annular or pie slice shaped panels that are stowed within the body of the satellite. So here you can see them in the stowed position. They're completely concealed in the interior of the CubeSat. And then here they are in the deployed position. Um, they're also actuated by bimetallic coils. You can see here in the on the right-hand side, um, an image of that uh, actuation uh, or that the actuator. Um, research on this design is still ongoing, um, but is definitely promising as this design has uh, increased radiative surface area compared to the previous design and benefits from uh, the thermal control system components being housed within the CubeSat body, which allows for increased radiative transfer to the coils and the panels from the warm interior, um, which again is something we talked about with the previous design, those exposed coils, um, you know, can, can get a little cold, whereas here they're housed in the interior and will stay much warmer. So we'd like to thank uh, everyone who contributed to this research and uh, yeah, I'd invite you to share any questions um, or suggestions you might have uh, regarding this work. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think as you march through towards the end of your presentation, you did answer a lot of the questions that came through in the chat. Um, you, I think you mentioned that all four of your um, pedals are actually can move independently based on the temperature of the their coils, correct? Correct, yeah, they each have their own bimetallic coil actuators. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, if one side was warmer than the other, uh, that panel would deploy further to cool that, that side down. Okay, yeah, it just looked like in the video they're all moving together, but I'm sure it was just the test environment they were in. Yeah. Yeah, um, someone did ask how much power to, do they reject? Um, so, you know, obviously that's dependent on the, um, the temperatures of the, um, of the CubeSat body. Um, mm -hmm. let's see here, we can see in this test, right, we're applying 35 Watts. Um, it's about, looks like about a 30% a duty cycle or so. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't have the specific number, but, uh, they're probably rejecting about a, a, a watt each, I would imagine. Okay. Um, and yeah, someone kind of asked like a follow-up almost, um, is how much of the total heat rejected is being rejected by the panels versus, you know, that um, surface of the CubeSat body itself? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So uh, the, the interior surface here is definitely rejecting uh, more than the panels combined, but the panels are um, rejecting still uh, a sizable portion. Um, 
yeah, again, I, I can't say off the top of my head. I seem to remember that, you know, maybe it was about um, 60%. So the, the panels together are about 60% of the heat rejection of the that main face, but mm -hmm. I, I can't say for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'm sure as you work on improving the conduction between the fins and the body too. That would <laughs> yeah, that's 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 the goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, looks like we have time for maybe one, possibly two more questions. Um, when the fins are closed, there seem to still be several openings fostering possible sun traps that might be quite detri detrimental. Do you plan on placing any flexible seal or MLI where the slits are still present even when the fins are closed? Yeah, yeah. So that's one of the things that um, would improve that turndown ratio. There are some gaps, um, you know, uh, at the sides and also, yeah, between between the the radiator fins if they're not completely closed. So yeah, definitely addressing some that something like that. Um, however, that might be is something that we would like to do. Um, yeah, it would significantly improve the. Uh, it would decrease the. Um, heat loss or heat absorption when the panels are closed, which is something that we'd like to see. 